this one made more sense to me. It's a concept that empowers masculinity to an over-exaggerated level that offends and degrades others. Yeah. On today's episode, <laughs> we are talking about all things toxic masculinity yeah. and why is that such a damn problem in the LGBTQ IAAP community. That is disrespectful. <laughs> So for today's QQs, we're gonna talk about fuckboys. <laughs> so everybody's favorite problematic subject. <laughs> the question is, what are some of the qualities that you sent like you sense in fuckboys? Or what are some of the traits that fuckboys tend to have? Selfishness. Yes. Period. <laughs> It's like that snack that you love, but you hate it at the same time. You eat too much of it. It's a guilty pleasure. They're very much double advocate. They want what they want, but they would do anything to get that. As far as like say sex. So they're like manipul manipulative. manipulative. Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna, okay. gonna be devil's advocate just to shake up the table for some apparent reason that benefits them. Mm -hmm. So the mind, the mind games. The mind games are definitely a thing that fuck would definitely do. They'll try to make you seem as though you're the one that's the issue. Meanwhile, they're the one that are displaying all these toxic traits. Mm -hmm. Right. You could have just said, if you want some ass, you could have just got that. If okay. You, said, hey, you, wanna, you could have got that. If you want it both, you could have got both. Right. If you don't want a relationship, just see you in a relationship. This could be fun. Maybe I want the same thing. Maybe I don't want to cuff your ass. Like, right. You may just want the nut. Nah. <laughs> it doesn't specifically have a look. That's the thing. Yeah. It doesn't have a look. It's more like a vibe. Mm -hmm that you get with people who are like F boys. Mm -hmm. Usually during first dates, mm -hmm. and you guys are feeling out the vibe and you're feeling each other and you're like, okay, we're gonna set up the next date, what's gonna happen from here, you know? Right. Oh, we're gonna meet up on next week or in a couple days, we'll plan this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. And then after the date is, you guys separate, you're doing your own thing, and then the next morning you text this person, you call them and they just don't pick up until like yeah. three months, like, <laughs> it's an later and I think that's a fuckboy trade because mm -hmm. you know damn well in your head that you're not going to meet up with me or if I was a fuckboy and I know in my head that this is not going to be a thing but I'm going to play like you know just to make you feel better right. I'm going to just make you believe that we're going to meet up again which is fucked up which it's it's selfish like we just mm -hmm. said it's selfish uh, definitely an asshole move it's manipulative but also, if you really think about it, a fuckboy doesn't really have to be somebody that you're trying to work a relationship with either. It could be somebody mm -hmm. who's in your workspace, who's in who's in association with you in any way necessary. Mm -hmm. That can be a fuckboy. They can manipulate any situation that they want mm -hmm. to try to get their end result. I agree with Julian. Like the check in when you want to check in and check out when you want to check out, and expect the person to have that same energy when you come back as if I did. I would, as how I did when we first met. Right. Ah, oh, God. Triggered. It's okay. We, we all got, we all got the wrong. Right. Since we're talking about toxic masculinity, it's time to get into the key. The first question I guess we can ask is, what is toxic masculinity and what does that look like to you? Because again, toxic masculinity could be such a subjective term and mm -hmm. we don't have our own definitions of it. So what is it? What does that look like to you? For me, toxic masculinity, toxic masculinity, excuse me, looks like somebody who's not really comfortable in their own skin. A lot of men who display toxic masculinity have a whole set and subset of insecurities mm -hmm. that they project on other people. You're projecting your insecurities on somebody else and making it just a toxic situation and a toxic environment. A person who try to project what they lack in self like the way you may look, mm -hmm. or if you went from being bigger to smaller, now you're more attractive to that type of game. Yeah. And now you go down that wormhole of, now I'm going to make you feel bad when you were once in my shoes. Mm -hmm. So I'd say that's a huge one. I found this term um, online. Mm -hmm. This one made more sense to me. It's a concept that empowers masculinity to an over-exaggerated level that offends and degrades others. Hmm. No, unfortunately, in like the gay community, we live, of course, like not everyone, but the, right. the masses of the gay community live to that hype, that hyper masculine, those standards 
that are from heteronormative complex. I've always called it like the mirror image, well, mm -hmm. the devil, the devil mirror image. You want to represent in the gay community the same way their things are represented in the heteronormative community. Top bottom. You need to look a certain way. If you are bottom, you have to act like a woman. Yeah. Us, and if you are a bottom, you can't be too masculine. So it goes along that spectrum. How have you, or have you ever projected toxic masculinity onto others? I'm gonna say high school. Cause in high school, I was, I was a, still a feminine guy, but I was more masculine in mm -hmm. high school. I wasn't so comfortable being feminine. So I always felt as though if I'm a data guy, excuse me, if I'm a data guy, he has to be like a man or present or or act a certain way because I don't want us to be peaked. Mm -hmm. And they would say, I don't want us to be shamed or be a target. Right. So that was just my whole idea. But as I got an older, I'm just a bitch on a bunch of you know? uh, <laughs> Definitely from like the dating apps when I was like introduced into when I was younger and introduced into the gay scene and I found out what Jack and Grinder was and I understood what a masculine gay man was and how accepted they were and then I see a feminine gay man I'm like that's not how you're supposed to act mm -hmm. and I would interact with I would interact with these people online like why do you look like that? You're supposed to look like the trade. You're supposed to look like this dude with the muscles. You're supposed to look like this. Why do you oh, talk like that? Why do you look Ooh, like that? Honey. Why do you wear makeup? Why wow. is toxic? Wow. Very toxic. Bro. And that was just that's just something that I right. But you see how he's grown uh, with the whole He's that bro. He's now kind of changed his ideal <laughs> with that. He's but not. it was because, you know, I you know, a lot of people they're grown, like we're we're nurtured by our parents. Mm -hmm. We're taught that a man needs to act like this. Mm -hmm. A woman's supposed to act like that. Right. And if a man is acting like that then it's not your norm. Yeah, you're not the norm. You're a sissy. So um, I carried those things through what I was taught through my elders, and I portrayed them onto the community. Um, I never really projected mm -hmm. toxic masculinity. I will hope not. At least from what I could remember, I hope not. Mm -hmm. Because I grew up in a house full of women. So I was able to understand if a guy was more feminine or if he had feminine ways about him he could be completely completely normal mm -hmm. it wasn't it wasn't an issue for me but then again my family is different from other families especially mm -hmm. being from the caribbean like my family they're a little bit more progressive mm -hmm. um, yeah. especially for caribbeans because they're yeah. like you're gay i'm gonna hang you yeah, or they're gonna send you back to the island. Light you on fire! Type send, of shit. send you back to the <laughs> island to get beaten mm -hmm. stuff. Right. You know, something I have just, I just thought of is the, oh, he's too gay or he's too feminine. Mm -hmm. In terms of like him being extra. Mm -hmm. I think that's something that majority of us all do in this community, which I fucking hate, but I also do it sometimes. When you meet someone whose energy is a little bit more extreme than yours, even when y'all are in like, Places of like, um, if you were like in the knee breathing spaces or even high spaces, it's like, damn, you do too much, you too extra. Oh yeah, he's gay, but I want you to be a subtle guy. Yeah, it's all how, do you tell, how, do you, how do you tell somebody to knew who they are? Like that's right. Real. But we have done that. Well, I don't know. Well, I don't want to speak for everyone in the room, but I have done it. Mm -hmm. Like when I go into a place, like like prime example, like the ballroom scene, right. as I am, and I'm like, yo, like they too hype. But you the hype one. Right. 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 <laughs> What are some things that you're currently seeing in the community that are toxic down, spewing toxic into the community in any kind of way? This might be real, real f up. Or shaking the table. But I feel like it's with the gym gays because they make it seem as though you have to look like this to be accepted within the community. And it's kind of fucked up because not everybody has that same ideal body. Who has that in their mind as their ideal body? Mm -hmm. Some people are perfectly comfortable with how they feel and how they look. And it's kind of sad when you like, oh, your body's not right enough for me. Like, granted, yes, you're allowed to have your preferences, your preferences right? but at the same time, you can't shame for somebody for, feeling, for, for looking mm -hmm. how they look and feeling how they feel. If somebody's comfortable as fuck in their skin, mm -hmm. you shouldn't want them, you shouldn't make them feel any type of way about that. Mm -hmm. Like with me, for example, 
it took me damn near a decade to be comfortable in how I'm built and how my body functions and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Trying to go up and down with the weight and stuff like that. Trying to keep a certain physique, certain frame. Like, I'm not beef for that shit no more. I'm 25. Like, I'm a grown ass adult. Like, I'm comfortable with who the fuck I am. I'm not trying to put on for nobody. Mm -hmm. First of all, the LGBT community, we are the most diverse community, in, in my opinion, and in my, in, I think it's facts, mm -hmm. that we're the most diverse community in the world. Yeah. And there's different types of looks. There isn't just one look to how a gay person uh, should look like. Right. So, um, yeah, I definitely understand where you're coming from because the gays be like, this is God. And if you don't look like him, y'all bitches are peasants to me. And sometimes it's not even spewing from the people who are in the gym. It's the people who are worshiping them. And like, oh my God. I was going to touch on that. Because mm -hmm. I was going to say, it's like, you will, you could have, you see this person because they have a nice body. You're looking at a superficial part. Mm -hmm. But they have my ideals. Mm -hmm. And you're sitting here letting them be loud and ignorant. But just because they look good, it's like, what? And then on the other hand, some of them are really good people and have yeah. good ideals but you know because of social media you don't really get to see the intangibles that people have you just see the nice pictures you see right. the ads you see you all see. that stuff and you mm -hmm. take that and you crumble it up and you like oh this is what gay men should look like like no i would just say the structure of social media now it, it's more of a us thing mm -hmm. than a, like their them thing because you don't need to track them mm -hmm. right. so you do things for clout and yet we feed that Right. So, if you gonna feed it, then I'm gonna get it to you. I was working out and I was in the gym every day because I just wanted my body to look a certain way. Okay. But when I had that conversation with myself, I'm like, what am I working out for? Who am I working out for? Right. I'm working out because when I got, I when I was younger, I used to get made fun of for being so skinny. So that's me caring about what other people thought about me. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, I had. Um, how the media portrays men who are bigger and masculine. If you look this way, you're gonna get respected. You're gonna be well paid. You're going to be worshiped. You're going to be all these things. I'm like, I need to look like that so I can get like that. And that's and that's not, for in my opinion, working out, that should not be your goal. You should be working out because, well, you're allowed to have your own opinion yeah. for working out. But for me, at least, my prior, like my main reason for working out is to not impress the people on the outside because right. their opinions don't matter and that really got to my head mentally and it put me in a depression. So well, what are some of the things that we could do to break the cycle of this epidemic of toxic masculinity? Be open-minded, like you can't be, when everything's so structured and boxed off, it makes things not fun, you know? Like be open-minded, be open to new experiences. You never know, you might find the most the most feminine femme top and fall in love with them through the masculine guy or vice versa. Like I don't mm -hmm. I don't know, like don't go like that. Exactly. Allow people to be free forming in, in every aspect. Instead of judging because you want them to look a certain way or mm -hmm. or feel a certain way that you may not personally be comfortable with. If this dude wants to walk around in his wig, makeup on, allow it. Except, like, accept it. Accept it and respect it. Right. Because at the end of the day, if it was you, would you want somebody sitting there sitting there just judging you for no apparent reason? You don't know me. And I think with this age of social media, it has put so much on that, that you are free to say so much. So I would say, like, just being open. Yeah. I think we have to understand that the world is constantly changing. There's new mm -hmm. ideas that are always going to come into form. We need to get out of like that medieval thinking. There's so many people who are still thinking like 200 years in the past, how the world should look like. Mm -hmm. It's 2019. We need to understand that there's gonna be, there's already so many type of ways that you can express your gender and your sexuality. Mm -hmm. And like religion, you don't have to you don't have to fully understand every single thing, but you should at least respect how a person wants to present themselves to the world. Yeah, the weirdest you know? thing I've ever heard. Yeah, you, like so yeah, weird. you don't you don't need to you don't need to know every single thing about that person's sexuality. You don't need to understand why someone is gender non-conforming. You don't need to understand why. And just respect it and keep it pushing. Stop thinking 
just stop thinking caveman days, right. boy, girl type right. thing. Like, no. Because, to be honest, 50 years down the road, when we're dead and the world keep moving, there will be like 500 other ways that you can express yourself, your gender. Because there's, I don't know how many genders there are. There's a whole lot of fucking genders. But, <laughs> there's, watch, and in, in the future, there's going to be double that amount. Yeah. So, you know, just like being open-minded and just be, just think forward and just be more progressive with your thinking. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I'd like to thank all of you guys for watching this episode. Um, this was a great episode. Support, yes. support you guys. Us. Talk about a lot of serious things that are causing a lot of traumas in people's lives. Right. And thank you. Anything you guys want to say? Shout out to the supporters. Shout out to people watching and commenting yes. and requesting for us to come back to you guys. Okay. We love it. You can find me <laughs> on Twitter at Ripboy78 and on Instagram at I am Lester J. On Twitter, Vices underscore Virtues and on Instagram, Vices Virtues. And y'all know where y'all can find me on Instagram. Oh, so they know that bitch. Y'all know where you can find me. I'm just kidding, I'm kidding. You can find me at Julian Patrick R. Well, Julian dot Patrick R. And, uh, and on Twitter, you can find me at uh, Julian Patrick R. Again, thank you guys for watching and stay tuned for more. Episode three coming up. I can't. <laughs>